Hey guys, this is Tanko Bear. No, that's not right. Uh, the NSA is coming to get us? No, that's not right either. Hey guys, it's Tanko Bear, Colbert Tech Repair, where you get everything tech, news, gaming, and nerd related. And today we have ourselves a graphics card review. It is the R9 290 Gaming Edition from MSI. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so here it is. This is the MSI R9 290 Gaming Edition. The card that you have seen on my test bench that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. Just doing some benchmarking. Uh, it's not a bad little card. This is the Overclocked Edition, as you can see here, with the Twin Frozer 4 design. And it's the R9 series. On the side here, we just have a little serial number. Nothing too big of a deal there. Here on the back. You can see that it has the uh, gaming app easy tune feature where you can go in and change all your overclock settings. It has the military class 4 top quality and stability with high C caps and solid caps. It has a uh, advanced thermal design on this with the uh, Trend Frozer 4 cooler, which you will see here in a second. The uh, reference model goes to, uh, at 95 degrees Celsius and this model runs at about 78 degrees which is what I found in my testing so they didn't lie about that also it is a lot quieter than the reference model the reference model is 43 decibels and this one is 31 this is a very very quiet card uh, some features of this card it has 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory 4k resolution gaming support PCI Express 3.0 by 16 bus interface uh, DirectX 11.2 OpenGL 4.3 has PRT support, image quality enhancement, Ifinity, AMD app, HD3D technology, Crossfire enabled, advanced audio power tune, and zero core. Now the minimum system requirements, it asks for this. You have to have at least one 16x lane, a 750 watt or greater power supply is what they recommend, um, but you don't have to have that. So this is a four gigabyte memory card. And it's actually a very nice looking card. It has a hybrid BIOS also, which I will show you. Let's get into the packaging itself. It's actually pretty cool how they packaged this. Alright, the first thing you're greeted with is this nice little pamphlet here. You open it up. And you will see you get your hybrid BIOS, which shows you that you can switch to the Legacy BIOS or the hybrid BIOS. You get a 6-pin to dual Molex connector. You get your quick user's guide, which usually isn't very quick because it has 20 different languages in it, but anyway. Uh, you have a VGA to DVI-I connector. Um, throw that away. You never want to use VGA unless you absolutely have to. You get a little MSI service center thing here that's all in Japanese. Tells you all your, I guess, your warranty information. You have a 6-pin to 8-pin adapter. And your driver disc. Now, as everybody tells you, don't use the drivers on this disc unless you do not have access to the internet. But, you can get some good things off of here. You can get the Afterburner software, which I use to overclock the card, and that's what I use, but it, do not use this unless you absolutely have to. Which, kudos to MSI for the presentation of this card. It's very, very, very nicely presented. We'll go into the card itself. As you can see here, we have a nice soft cell foam. And here is the card itself. Inside of soft cell foam and a anti-static bag. And this is a very sturdy box. Alrighty guys, so here is the card. You can see it's a very, very nice looking design. Very, very catching to the eye. Uh, you can see the twin Frozer fans here. They work very, very well. Um, they cool very well and they are very, very silent here on the top of the card. 
you can see the 6-pin and the 8-pin power connector. Here on the side, you can see the heat pipes that run through the card. And MSI included something on this card that you don't see on a lot of cards. They have the MSI backplate, which is very, very nice. It adds a very nice look to the back of the card. You can see the graphics die right there and all the service information here on the bottom. You can see the heat sink and the PCI bus. And here on the side, we have display port, your HDMI, and your dual DVI out. So, that's about it for the overview of the aesthetics of the card. Um, it is a very nice looking card. It's a very sturdy card. It's a lot heavier than, than my 780 is. Um, so it is a very, very heavy card. But from here, I will take you over to my gaming rig and I will show you some benchmarks. Getting to what really matters. How did the card perform? Well, the card performed pretty well, actually. Um, in Valley Benchmark, on the Extreme HD preset, which runs at full 1080p, it scored 60 frames per second average with a score of 2500 and a max temperature of 81 degrees Celsius. Now, I did overclock this card. It is overclocked to 1100 megahertz on the chip and 1350 megahertz on the memory. Now, in Battlefield 4, on ultra settings on 1080p in multiplayer, I had a minimum FPS of 50 frames per second, a maximum of 146, and a average of 87 frames per second. So very easily playable, more than easily playable on on ultra settings, everything maxed out. I played Battlefield 4 no problem. And then I decided to do one final test. I did the Fire Strike 1.1 test and I scored at 8334. So this is, was a very good card overall. Um, it ran very cool. It ran very quiet. I didn't have any problems. It's not very highly overclockable. I don't know if it's just the R9 series cards themselves, or maybe I just didn't get the Silicon Lottery. But I've heard from a lot of people that the R9 series cards don't have a lot of headroom for overclocking. If I go over 1100 megahertz on the uh, VRAM, I get some artifacting. Uh, at like 1125, 1150. Value still runs, but it gets artifacting, so I'm not running it at that speed. Other than that, I had no issues with the card. The card ran fine. It was easy to work with. This is one of the first AMD high-end cards that I've ever owned, and it stacks up quite nicely to my 780. Um, I'm still going to use my 780 in my main gaming rig for now. I might end up getting a 290X and testing that against the 780 and seeing how it goes from there, but... This is it for the MSI Gaming Edition of the R9 290OC with the Twin Frozer 4 cooler. If you liked, give it a like. If you didn't, feel free to give it a dislike. If you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else on my channel, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section down below. I love communicating with you guys. You can find me here on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at TanglebearNinety92, and you can find me on Facebook.com/CobertechRepair. See you guys next time.